Well, the most widely used reliever medications are short-acting beta-2 agonists given by inhalation, uh, such as salbutamol and terbutalin. And these are effective in relieving symptoms, but patients often overuse them. And this may co actually contribute to worse asthma control because they tend to underuse controller medications, particularly inhaled corticosteroids. Well, the Sigma studies looked at uh, formoterol, budesonide combination or Symbicort uh, as a reliever and compared this with a short-acting beta agonist, terbutalin, as a reliever on its own and terbutalin combined with regular budesonide as a treatment and found that the Symbicort reliever was just as effective as the regular inhaled steroids and short-acting beta agonists and far more effective than the short-acting beta agonist on its own in terms of controlling asthma and preventing exacerbations. But this was a controlled trial and the adherence to the inhaled steroid was extremely high because patients were monitored. But in the real world, we know that adherence is very, very low to regular inhaled steroids. So it's very likely that the Symbicort reliever is the best way to treat patients with mild asthma in the future. Well, in this ERS meeting, there's been a further analysis of the Sigma data and looking at the patients that used frequent rescue medication. And it turned out that if you looked at the people that used more than four, more than six, or more than eight rescue inhalers a day, this was much less commonly seen with the people using Symbicort than the groups of patients using Terbutalin as rescue. And it also found that in the Symbicort reliever group, that they had a longer time until the next exacerbation. So all of this suggests that using Symbicort as a reliever on its own is able to control the asthma better and prevent future exacerbations. So it's a very simple way of treating people with mild asthma. Well, I think the, the next step is to try and put this in a real world context. So the Sigma study was a highly controlled trial where patients were carefully monitored. But what we need to do is look at the use of Symbicort as reliever in the real world. Because we know that patients are very poor at using regular maintenance treatment. Even combination inhalers given regularly are not used uh, very frequently and so the idea would be to really look at Symbicort reliever as the only treatment uh, in real life and I think the differences will be even greater than we can see in the controlled trial because patients use relievers when they have symptoms. Well I think the main advances in, in the, 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 the main new treatments are really the ones applied to severe asthma. So we've seen the introduction of three different anti-IL-5 treatments and these can be quite effective for highly selected patients with severe eosinophilic asthma. There are new biologics that may be even more effective and may also treat associated diseases like um, rhinosinusitis and atopic dermatitis that are commonly found in people with asthma.